Today, we go to Guatemala for a tale that interweaves history, politics, and myth in a haunting fashion. <laughs> For any of you who haven't heard of the Latin American myth of La Llorona, the weeping woman. Here we go. She was known for her beauty. The marriage was splendid. They had two beautiful children. After a time, she discovered him in the arms of a younger woman. She murdered their children. After she realized what she had done, she was consumed by guilt. She threw herself into those same waters and is cursed to roam the earth searching for children to take their place. In the basic research I've done, it appears that La Llorona is a popular folklore across Latin America and there seem to be many variations of it. But yeah, as terrible as the curse of La Llorona is, that piece of exposition gives us the outline of the myth. It is a tale of a woman wronged and doomed to eternal sorrow and regret. In the first two shots of the movie, we get a glimpse of this obviously wealthy family and it is immediately apparent that there is trouble. For you see, the patriarch of the family, Enrique Monteverde, is based on a real-life tyrant, Ephraim Rios Mont, a military dictator in the early 80s who oversaw the genocide of the indigenous peoples of Guatemala. Thirty years on, after a farcical trial and no justice, La Llorona, the mother of the land, enters the dictator's life. In this version, she is no longer a helpless, vengeful woman taking it out on the innocent. As I said, she is a representation of the mother of the wronged people. And when the rest of humanity has failed her children, she is here to exact justice by herself. When we are first introduced to the family, a strained silence pervades the household regarding the dictator's terrible crimes. Mi papá te te contaba todo. Te prohíbo pensar eso. The director, Jairo Bustamante, had this to give in the way of explanation. In my country, people don't want to talk about the problematic of our recent, uh, historic, recent historic. I find it quite clever. On the one hand, this is, at least from the director's perspective, an accurate representation of the Guatemalan people's way of dealing with their collective trauma. On the other hand, it works as a device to introduce us, the outsiders, to this unfortunate chapter in the country's history. As the dictator's family are coming to terms with the truth, we are discovering it. The film is very delicate in its depiction of all the sides concerned. The indigenous are not merely victims to be pitied. The people with a strong sense of identity and culture, and with a will to seek justice. There are no cheap tricks to tug at our heartstrings and no drawn out emotional scenes with saccharine background music. On the same note, the film shows unusual sympathy for the women in the dictator's household. Sure, they share the culpability of his crimes, but each in their own way are themselves victims of his actions too. How true is this in reality? I'm not sure. However, the film received the blessings of indigenous Guatemalan activist and Nobel laureate Rigoberta Menchu and I respect that. Maria Mercedes Coroy plays the maid Alma or La Irona herself. With limited dialogue and screen time, her character is given an aura of mystery. What is she? A figment of the household's collective imagination and guilt? Did the spirit of the land take an actual physical form and walk in? Is she the filmmaker's way of serving justice <laughs> when none was in reality? The cast is largely inexperienced, though you cannot tell. One reason for this could be that the film industry in Guatemala is almost non-existent. Bustamante is one of the small number of filmmakers building the industry from ground up. This film highlights the importance of such efforts. When Hollywood tried its hand with La Irona, they turned her into just another bad ghost, indistinguishable from all other similar monsters. With Bustamante, the myth gets the respect it deserves and also a very personal interpretation. To transform the legend and to make a, a more powerful woman and not a woman crying because she kills her kids but uh, more a woman crying because she loves a lot of kids, more a kind of a motherland. Or a he marries this age-old myth with the modern-day socio-political climate of his country, like no outsider can do. So, here is to hoping Guatemala can produce plenty more authentic tales both horror and otherwise.
8 pause out of 10 Magic realism is a style of fiction where the story and setting are largely grounded in reality but include that one element of magic. Have you seen any horror film with magic realism? If so, let me know in the comments below. Also, if you like and enjoy my content, please subscribe. This is the Disembodied Voice, signing out.